Alright, time. No, that's not what it is. It's what the fuck. It's uh, welcome. Uh, something, something. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm getting really old. Uh, welcome to another edition of What the Fuck Happenings Here in Mandem. Alright, um, jeez. <laughs> uh, so I was going to talk about uh, organizations and all that stuff, and then uh, I was sort of going to talk about the fact that you have to trust the people who are in it, and, uh, you know, that they're always corrupt, and, you know, give their kids, you know, high-paying jobs, and it's all become so fake and phony, and, uh, but then there's the incompetence issue, too, you know. People are just too old to be fucking president. Just a fact. Uh, and so I probably am getting too old to, to be me anymore. And uh, so I should be fired and you know, retired. <laughs> and somebody else should replace me. Something better than me should be me now. But, uh, you know, no one's applying for the job. So, uh, you'll just have to settle for... Uh, this as the uh, organization uh, so it is a uh, uh, you know I'm doing these videos that were on the anti-natalist advocacy convention thing anyway and so there was some discussion about community and there's all kinds of different ways to understand that I guess and part of the way would be that uh, you know there's a collective of individual organizations you could say I'm an organization uh, a group and then there's other groups, subgroups, uh, elements, uh, whatever, and that you could argue that that's a community, that those things have to cooperate with each other, those cells, <laughs> you know, uh, and, you know. So it, it gets uh, a little gnarly about what exactly it means. Um, community, I mean, it's a word, um, and it's all a bunch of. Uh, points of view and approaches and strategies and uh, you know common purposes and maybe even letting each other know that um, oh, I don't know y you know like if you're gonna have a D-Day or something you probably should let the Russians know and the other people that are sort of playing along with you in the war effort uh, what your plan is so they don't have some counter plan at the wrong time or that they could maximize their counter plan and all of that kind of crap. So it would be good for the people who are interested in the uh, common goal but have not common principles or common long-term goals. You know, you have a short-term goal that's in common, but you don't have a long-term goal that's in common. Uh, that uh, you have some sort of uh, cooperation and capacity to uh, support each other and uh, you know if you have extra food you give some to their or you know you know you have some extra tanks you give them some tanks some sort of crap like that um and you know yeah uh, i mean none of that's very interesting or fun uh, but it's probably logistically necessary uh and so that's one way of looking at it and the other side is some sort of human support huggy huggy thing uh, for <laughs> which I really don't have any interest in uh, so you know it's not uh, exactly a subject for which um, I have much relevance because um, I can you know barely figure out my own strategy to get from today to tomorrow and, and do so staying alive and functional and all that kind of crap I mean I have successfully survived it's true but barely, and, um, you know, so maybe I'm not the go-to guy on the subject of organization. Uh, but, yes, it really, it's such a hard thing to say that it matters anyway, um, just in the world that exists. Like, at one time, it meant something, you know, it'd be like a 503C, it'd be a non-profit, because it was kind of highly regulated, and um, so you could be kind of guaranteed that if you gave you your money or your support, that it wasn't just going to the union boss, you know, that kind of thing. And, but then they all became just corrupt, and they could, you know, again, once you start allowing tax-deductible donations to go to an organization that pays the daughter of the founder $5 million a year, uh, you have to wonder, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> what, what, what is that? What, that's, that doesn't sound non-for-profity. That sounds pretty profity. 
Um, so, you know, the whole thing becomes pretty much shit uh, as an idea or a concept. And uh, it's just another piece of graft. Like, oh, yeah, you have to do it because you have to steal money from the taxpayers, too. Yeah, like everybody else. Uh, you know, it's just... Uh, it's all... Yeah, it's all part of the cultural breakdown and the fact that, uh, you know, laws don't apply to everybody and all of that, all the crap that just doesn't make this a very good place to live, Earth, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, um, so obviously that's, I think, a little broader uh, statement about the subject than was in the videos. And uh, again, the video, the conversation was mostly about s community as a support group, not community as a uh, let's sharpen our arrows and more effectively stab the bad guys in the neck. Um, you know, it's, uh, you know, and I'm more interested in the part that has something to do with winning the war than I am interested in the part where the soldiers are <laughs> not as upset. Uh, you know, or something, you know, more comforted. They feel like they're at home, you know. Um, whatever, you know. So, yeah, that's where it gets a little bit... Uh, 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 uh. So it's a worthwhile conversation, all that crap. Who should be included, who should be excluded because they're too too aggressive, you know, in their statements or they're too reckless in their statements or they're too honest in their statements. And therefore, they shouldn't be included because they're not playing the politically correct game. Um, and the counter argument really is, uh, you know, people doing stuff that just totally does the cause no good. You know, they put something really dumb on their sign, uh, you know, uh, use the N word or something, do something really dumb and, uh, screw up the whole game for everybody else by making, uh, the good guys look like bad guys. Um, so you can always find lots of people like that who aren't doing the Democrats any good, and you can find people who aren't doing the Republicans any good, uh, you know, in their uh, passionate advocacy, you know. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's all legitimate conversation, frankly, and some of it's interesting, so, you know, can't say it's not worth talking about. Uh, it's just one of those nuisance things, you know, uh, or maintenance of the idea of being an advocate and, you know, having to maintain this little silly structure of this whole idea of, you know, marching across the territory and, uh, you know, and uh, unfortunately uh, it, there is maintenance. So something like that is the subject. So we'll mush through some of this will be as an individual uh, and yes there's like I said there's circumstances where rogue uh, works and there's circumstances where you yeah sometimes you need somebody to throw a hammer get something started um, you know being uh, you know uh, any news is good news kind of thing uh, any talk or interest uh, you know you got to get the ambulance chasers to show up uh, so sometimes you have to do this antics crap um, and, uh, you know, all of this is, but it's just such mushy ground. So I guess the best analogy I use in this video is that, um, you know, it's a boxing match. You really want some kind of pure fight between right and evil. Okay. Good guys and bad guys. And you want the good guys to be able to show they're the good guys and they're going to win, you know, and, uh, there's a, just, but there's people throwing shit from the audience, you know, and there's crap all over the floor, and, uh, you know, the whole fight is kind of screwed up because the, what's going to decide who wins or loses is probably somebody slipping on a banana peel, you know, and it's, uh, so it's just sort of messed up the game a bit. Um, I'd say in the long term, intelligence is going to win. Um, generally speaking, the progress is in that direction. But I suppose it really depends on whether we create some 1984 scenario where there's only six people on Earth who have any intelligence and everybody else is a, a, a Borgish tool for their manipulation or something. Like they're playing a video game with all the morons. Uh, you know, some kind of crap like that. Um, you know, some sort of matrix uh, kind of scenario where most humans are... Uh, just captive slaves to 
the agenda of some, you know, grape eaters <laughs> or whatever. Uh, so, and yeah, we sort of have the look that we're heading that way. And, um, but I just don't think you can ever stay that way. So, uh, you know, the Neo shows up and blows up the Matrix and, you know, frees the humans to be jackasses in some other way. Uh, is it worth playing with my trucks? Yeah, <laughs> you know, uh... Yeah, so I was talking about how when I was a kid, uh, you know, you'd, you'd start to realize sort of a fatalist kind of viewpoint, and you just kind of tone down your investment in the game, and, <laughs> you know, you're just not going to be a very social and, and you know, player anymore. You're not just not going to be a buyer. Um and um, you're just going to end up finding some way to internalize existence and live it quietly inside of yourself rather than be a participant with them. Get with the sharks to get there? Okay, so that's just the, the kind of the lifeboat argument or some argument where you have to recognize that uh, if you're going to be pro-life, then you're pro all of the horrible undeserved torture that takes place and uh, you know is that really an acceptable price for your delusion that you're accomplishing something and it really is a delusion because you really can't articulate anything that's worth the price paid um, I wouldn't you know again I wouldn't pull the wings off a fly to save the human race I mean I just wouldn't do it it's too high a price for absolute nothing Uh, then the other one is basically someone who deals with uh, a community of people who don't have children, but not necessarily... Yeah, so this was, you know, this group was just different people, and, you know, the, the one group is a little bit distant from the actual subject, and that they're just basically a group of people trying to find comfort because they can't have children, and they feel somehow abnormalized and isolated because they're not doing what everybody else is doing. Now, in some ways, that can only relate to people in certain countries because in most of the civilized world, there's a hell of a lot of people who don't have children. And so you really aren't going to be all that isolated from the rest of everybody else because not everybody's having kids. Um, just a fact. Everybody isn't doing some traditional behave like all the other Christians or behave like all the other Muslim bullshit with uh, because yeah humans suck uh, you know, so there's lots of po positive uh, signals all right uh, don't know yeah so yeah so just pointing out that we are winning the war there's lots of signs that people are cynical and don't really like what humans are doing and how they're doing it there's lots of those feelings in people's guts that this isn't quite good enough this isn't the world that deserves much praise um, and, um, that's why there's so many people who are cautious about having kids and all that kind of crap and aren't recklessly jumping into it. Um, I suppose there's also just the fact that it's, you can't have kids as a poor person without looking bad nowadays. You know, it's, uh, if you didn't, if you're not financing your kids, you're looking like an asshole. Um, because the... You know, in the past, the, the infrastructure wasn't there, but there were so many kids growing up in poverty that nobody really paid any attention. But now it's more obvious, and um, you look like more of a jackass. If you can't take care of your kids, you know, you're not going to be liked by too many people. Resources and power and uh, to fight the Russians... And then you use those very resources of organization and money and, and weapons... Uh, to, you know. All right, so it's talking about how you get sabotaged by your allies. So, you know, we made an ally out of Osama bin Laden, and, uh, you know, he blew up in our own lap. So, you know, you got to have some standards about what you're going to call an ally uh, and recognize that maybe it has to be a very conditional ally, and you have to understand there's a point where you're going to pull all of the strings and you're going to be you're not going to, you know, that handshake of agreement is a conditional handshake of agreement. You have to know right up front, uh, I hate your guts. 
and as soon as we get rid of that fucker, you're going to become the fucker. And, you know, maybe you got to be a little more honest about that. Uh, instead of pretending that it's all okay, that, uh, you know, your agenda, okay, is completely different than my agenda. And that's all these natalists need to fucking appreciate, is that's what they're doing. They're assigning a horrid risk and a horrid outcome and pretending uh, they have some reason to justify the pain they're opening the door to. The yeah, then they really have to have that in their face. In my opinion, it should be appropriate that they sign a piece of paper saying, yes, I'm a motherfucker who thinks I'm important enough to cause other people pain. Uh, some kind of statement, because that's what they are. That's what they don't care. They're not interested in understanding that there's consequences to their pro-life, their positive, their optimistic viewpoint. Um, and if they're fundamentally wrong, they're fundamentally evil. And uh, they've got to be able to appreciate, well, yes, if I'm making a mistake, I understand that somebody else is going to pay the price for it. You know, bastards. It's because they don't want their side to lose. Yeah, so I was just talking about the people throwing the banana peels, throwing the distractions, throwing the distortions, throwing the perversions, trying to cut down, trying to destroy the real debate about the real subject with a bunch of unnecessary bullshit that doesn't have anything to do with the subject. Just trying to take advantage of, of, of uh, stuff that will distract people from the real subject. And, uh, you know, that's just kind of, you know, it's, it's a fact, you got to deal with it, but it does mess up this nice gladiator war. It does, you know, it makes it even more of an insidiously stupid that we have to sit here on earth and have these fucking hecklers always interrupt and always fuck it up. Because we can't even agree to kill hecklers. We're not able to biologically have children for whatever reason. And also people, some of them, not all, uh, have... So she was basically explaining how most of the organizations she's a part of is not anti-natalist. They're just in some way crippled by their inability to be natalists. Which isn't a group of people I really wish to support, frankly. Comfortable. And... Um... And you know, both of them moved, and I was left with. Them. Ah, so I was talking about a little personal thing where you know how friendships work, and um, you know how why I guess I'm not really a community kind of person. I really don't need to fellowship with human beings, and it's not really something that drives me. And it might just be because I was scarred, <laughs> you know, uh, early in life, and found uh, the whole thing quite dangerous. Uh, I'm pretty anti-pet now, and it's mostly just because you watch a few of them die, and it's just, it becomes personal. It's not just a philosophical per perspective anymore. You, you recognize this really is too high a price to pay. It's just not fair. It's not good enough. It's just not good enough. Things I care about treated badly by nature is not good enough. I don't accept it. I won't accept it. I won't vote for it. As an organization, you lose all focus, and you, the focus just becomes financing oh. the organization. Shit. God damn it. Fucking goddamn computer. Why the hell is it freezing? Stop doing that, fucker. Computer won't even behave. All right, hopefully this is still a video. Uh, I don't know exactly what I said. So we'll just continue. <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's where all the money end up being. You know, that's what's, it's like all these charities are like that. Okay, so it's just some point about this, you know, the fact that, it, yeah, it's organizations suck. Um, it's really difficult to do it right. Um, you have to have rules and discipline. Oh, this really is freezing a lot. Anyway, let me try pausing and see if anything can be fixed. All right, should be back, computers. Just some subtle, stupid thing, you know, some stupid little incompatibility with some aspect of my video card and Linux, and it just, you know, just sucks. <laughs> anyway, uh, well, and you know, OBS. It has something to do with OBS. It's just some subtle little 
issue where it just can't do this right. Anyway. <sighs> but the rest of it ain't too goddamn pretty. Okay, and the average ain't too goddamn pretty. I mean, there's lots of videos. You know, we can see this live eagle in a nest or something. And I'm sure they... So, so you know, it's just, look, the reality is there in your face all the time. And you, you kind of know people die and lots of horrible things happen. And so even if they're not happening to you, there's all kinds of evidence that's happening to somebody else. And, uh, again, why somebody would vote for that. Okay, it's an acceptable prize. Slow, horrible death. Yeah, that's acceptable. It's okay with me. Let's have more of it. Very hard to understand that perspective, frankly. It's just these gung hoers. That's all they know is gung ho. You know, on their bandwagon. Yeah. We're singing the gung ho song. Yeah, it's just, what the fuck? That's not acceptable. So if we can't fix that, we're done playing. Yes, exactly. I mean, if you have to rip the head off of one lion cub, I'm not going to play. That's too high an ante, right? If you have to ante to get into the game, you know, to, to be one of the players or whatever, you have to ante by throwing a lion cub's head into the fucking pile. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not going to go pull a lion head's cub, you know, cub's head off for, for this slop. So go find something else to do, because this isn't doable. This isn't a game worth playing. Let's kill stuff. It's fun. No, let's not. It's stupid. Tremendously long way. I mean, if I think back to 2011, you know, there was a, there was a very well... Uh, you know, and then this is part of the labeling thing, too. You know, there's... there's it's almost okay. So there's a lot of pessimism because between <laughs> among the groups in the sense of somehow they think we're we're losing, you know, and um, you know where there where this tiny minority and again all the statistics from the 1950s onward are all quite positive in terms of how smart people have been affected by growing up and recognizing and seeing and watching. And so all of the debauchery and the foolery and the nonsense has made people quite cynical and quite sick of conversations about how spectacular we, we're all doing and how great everything is. And uh, they're not seeing it. Um, they're saying, maybe I want a real paycheck, maybe I want this, maybe I want that. They're not just sitting there and being slaves to the system anymore. They're saying, man, eh, fuck the system. Uh, so it's out there. The cynicism is seething, really. And, um, you know, and again, it's only the importes who are the, 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 the soilent uh, chemical that will poison us all with their religion, you know, and their moronic traditional values of no muffler and 17 kids. But um, there's a lot more to natalling than just having fun. <laughs> you know, that this uh, does represent a, a philosophical position. Right, you know, all these, these peasant type people, you know, they don't, that they have kids, it's fun because they don't pay any attention. They don't care about their kids. Their kids are tools, like a rake or a fork, and they, oh, one of them got rusty, I threw it out. Um, yeah, they don't give a shit. It's, it's all utility. It's all, what can the kids do for me? Um, you know, they're so backward and stupid and yeah again that's the kind of stuff these civilizations have all decided to feel bad for and to placate and to do everything they can to support and it's just so not clever same thing you just say about all this stuff in the future where's it going to get you the higgs bosons are not going to stop torture um, all of this crap. Yeah, 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 all these, well, whatever. It should be this a statement on its own. Higgs bosons are not going to stop torture. So, yeah, whatever. Your singularities, your, your horseshit sparkly crap, your double cell phone, whatever the fuck you're imagining, it just ain't going to stop it. It ain't going to work. So, um, it's not going to make the game playable, frankly, for an intelligence. Something smart isn't going to play the game, even if they have a smartphone.
even if their phone is smarter than they are. You know, they're having anti-pregnancy showers. Uh, yeah, so again, there's lots of stuff going on where people are finding something else to do with their life and being perfectly satisfied and finding something else to do with their life uh, than, you know, uh, sit around moping because they're, they don't have any kids and their kids didn't, you know, bring their troubles home. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, what, what the, you know... What, what exactly do they do for you? I just, I'm sorry, don't get it. With the open video call, uh, you know. So part of it was this conversation too about face-to-faceness and, uh, you know, being able to actually physically hug each other or something. And again, that's just, to me, just, come on. Yeah. What does that have to do with anything nowadays? Uh, you just, you know. You just don't, you don't, you don't need to touch anybody. We all found out. I mean, COVID. What the, you know, what was the problem exactly? Uh, it was kind of good. People got some distance from each other. Uh, they end up healthier that way. Uh, it's a lot of positives, frankly. A way, of, you know, to win the war, and that's the whole objective, and to do it in some sort of rational. And Yes, and again, but the planning is so difficult because it's just not about just throwing your lefts and rights and the, you know doing it in some mechanical way because you have to realize the floors are trap doors. There's all kinds of gimmicks thrown into it. There's all kinds of bullshit that has nothing to do with the fight. Uh, you know, so it's just not. It's hard to have a strategy. Uh, because you just don't know what's going to work. What kind of stupid event has to happen for everything to change? You know, that kind of crap. I mean, what would the human race be right now, right? Is, let's say uh, Armstrong and the other guys got on the moon, and, uh, you know, as they're saying, one small step, and um, all of a sudden there was a whole, you know, little meteors hit, and their, their suits collapsed, and they all dropped dead on the moon, you know. We have a little film of it, <laughs> and they all fall over and die. <laughs> you know, people might be a little more, you know, sullen and recognize kind of the, you have a little more humility about how hard it is to really do this right, that all this stuff is more complicated, you know. Uh, it'd, be, it'd be like the national baby dying, and everybody would maybe say, well, let's not have another baby. <laughs> oh, come on, let's not do that. You know, not a good idea. You know, so the whole world changes based on how these little things, what little things happen in history and how they happen. And, uh, you know, maybe if somebody actually died in an Olympic event, you know, uh, right on camera uh, in some spectacularly awful way. Um, yeah, maybe we wouldn't be doing this. Way maybe people would be saying, you know, what, what, what is all this crap anyway? These are all useless events. I mean, you know, none of these people are going to cure cancer. This is all just kind of silly. Why are we rewarding people with huge prizes for doing shit that can't possibly be useful? I mean, jumping over a stick. <laughs> you know, what the hell is this? You're jumping over little hurdle thingies. What the hell is this? This ain't going to help anybody. This ain't going to get the job done. What the hell we we killing people for this? You know, they might get a, a more sensible perspective on recognizing that what are we buying here? And why are we buying it? I mean, we're just buying because we're buyers. We don't have any kind of judgment at all. We can't apply any kind of reasoning to what we're buying. We just sit there and have money in our pocket and we're just going to buy anything that comes along. Oh, uh, yeah, come on. Life is a lemon, uh, you know. There should be a law against selling things as shitty as life. It, it, it should be a law against it. Uh, it looks like the end. All right, time. Yeah, I guess it was. All right, so um, I think very worthwhile in a way. The conversation is good to have, good to think about these things. And uh, so, yep. Uh, I'm for it, uh, but it's all, again, it's sort of my failure uh, that I haven't done more to organize content, to organize arguments, organize approaches to making arguments, uh, do more to make it more effective, frankly. 
and um, but I have, you know, I, I've done the best I can, <laughs> you know, coming from where I'm coming from, which is from the perspective of somebody, you know, who in some respects isn't a whole person. Uh, you know, I'm a sort of the, just the shadow of the person I was, and uh, you know, it's hard being a shadow. Uh, it's everything's harder to do as a shadow uh, kind of thing. So I, I don't want to make excuses for myself, but I'm just saying it's, uh, it is what it is. I have struggled through every bit of it, and I've certainly paid for every breath I've taken. Um, so I think I've paid whatever a due is called, you know, a dues. I, I think I have. I think I'm, I'm up to date on my dues paying. Uh, but whatever. Um, I wish I could have done more. I wish I could have paid more. But uh, you know, just don't have it. So, till the next time and such and so forth and whatnot. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'll have to do. Okay, till the next time.